Once upon a time, these lands were ruled by the Aldrich Kingdom. The area was inhabited by the Thracians, conquered by the Byzantines and ruined by the Mongol Tatars. It survived the Golden Age. And as you might have guessed, we are in Bulgaria, on the footsteps of the Rila Mountains at the Balkan Off-Road Rally. The summer passed in a blink of an eye. It seems like yesterday that the teams were racing in the Rally Breslau Poland. And already in the middle of September, many of them came to Bulgaria to the mountain ski resort of Borovets. Welcome to Bulgaria, welcome to Borovets. About 80 teams for eight long days fighting for the title of the fastest. Eight days should be enough time to learn who will be the best of them all. Let us follow the competitors on their route of over two and a half thousand kilometers from the Balkan mountains at the start line to the Black Sea coast at the finish and see the most interesting moments of the rally. But this will be later. For now, we have to do paperwork, stickers, navigation tools, the administrative and technical checks. All of this is a normal procedure for all the rallies and it's time consuming. Many would probably prefer to take a nice sun bath in the warm September sun. But no one came here to rest. We will not compare the two big races, the Breslau in Poland and the Balkan Off-Road Rally, simply because they are completely different. But some things are more or less the same, and these are mainly related to the safety of the competitors. Following this method, the first eight train is compulsory for all participants, and it must be handled in the most serious way. Remember, we are here to help you and to rescue even in the hardest conditions so you can rely on us, we keep our fingers crossed, good luck and remember if something happens we will be there to rescue and to save your life, good luck! The last formality before the start is a general photo of all the participants. Well, during shooting anything can happen, not having the correct lens, no battery for the camera, no memory card or something else. Here the case was totally different. Everyone was in such a hurry to start the rally that they quickly lined up, smiled, shouted and began to run towards the rally cars. But they all forgot that actually the main photographer was not even ready to do the shot. As we say in this case, for those who do the things too fast, they have to remake it again until proper. And well, now we can start. Welcome everyone to the Balkan Off-Road Rally 2018. Today is the first day, it's Saturday, the 15th of September, and uh, we just finished the briefing. The uh, rally will start today at 11.55 for the cross country and for the extreme, and I hope everybody goes to the finish and has a good time. Thank you. The routes of the cross country in extreme categories can be imagined like in a big square. Sometimes they overlap for a bit or they cross on some points, but the logistics plan for the movement between the press zones required from us to cross mountain terrain and to drive lots of kilometers per day. I will say a cliche that you might all know. How interesting and safe a rally is does not depend on the large number of teams in the organization, but it all depends on the specific people who make and prepare the rally routes, the road books, and who come up with the interesting press points. For example, for the last 20 years, all the tracks of the Ladoga Trophy are made by Yuri Ovchinikov. When he was young, he used to do orienteering, and the same is here. Meet Kirill Panayotov. He was also engaged in orienteering in the same way, and now, for a long time, he's making the tracks for two projects the Rally Breslau Poland and the Balkan Off Road Rally. We are now in the valley where the most famous Bulgarian potatoes are grown. We're near Samokov. Uh, 
and as it turned out, it has a lot in common with two complete strangers. Making routes, writing the road books, it's a tremendous and very responsible job. And it takes many weeks of hard work before the rally. At the prize-giving ceremony, Kiri Panayotov was awarded a special prize for his contribution. In this rally, I spent a lot of time together with him in his white Toyota. This man is the creator of the road books of all rallies that we have done this year. There are many common things between the cross-country and the extreme competitors, but the way of preparation for the event is totally different. The rally drivers most often say that, ah, the first day is usually easier to get the feeling of the car and to find the right rhythm, and for extreme people, everything is much simpler. They just sit in the car and off we go. The main thing is to find the route and use the right note. The first special stage for the extreme category began directly from the beaver. And the first extreme section for the teams is just about 200 to 300 meters from the start line. But who would guess that not everyone would even be able to reach this place? I have to say that this is not a mud race and such rallies are very few. The main difficulty is the terrain itself and the first obstacle, a deep ravine that had to be crossed. You make a careful descent, hook the winch cable and winch out of the place. But there are only two good routes for getting out. And in this place the difference between the teams showed really well. And here I'm talking about the active and the passive ones. You see such teams absolutely everywhere in the world in all competitions. The active crews will immediately look for a new route and most often they will not even take the easiest ones. But they just don't want to wait. And a passive team will stand in line, go slowly, wait its turn. But in the other way, not everyone wants to compete for the top places in the ranking. The rally started. Press point is located just 200 meters from the start. And first we see Frank and Françoise with ease. Here is the second team. And Jim Marsden, the winner of many off-road rallies, including the Breslau Poland, completely missed the place. He did not manage to find it, passed around it on the top side, went two or three times back and forth, and we whistled, we waved to them, and even the birds shouted to them, but they still missed the place. Jim's crew is always in the zone of special attention. First, because he's really good and fast driver. Second, because he has the most powerful car, with 650 horsepower and he's able to use it and thirdly 
From the point of the journalist, photographers and cameraman, it's the crew that's interesting to shoot. While he's in the driver's seat, Jim has a special feature. As we say it, pedal to the metal. They start so fast that the co-pilot missed this tricky turn in the roadbook and they got lost in the extreme section. At the start of the extreme, there was another English team with a very similar car. Judging by the sound, they had the same powerful engine. And they probably would have been worthy rivals, but due to technical reasons, they had to retire on the second day. In the extreme category, at the start, we saw 11 teams, 10 in the open class and one in the limited subclass. It's my first time in Bulgaria and I connect it mainly with the Black Sea coast. But in the other parts of the country, there are such beauties I did not expect. There are low populated areas, super nice mountains, really incredible tracks, speedy roads and the landscape changes turn after turn. It makes it very attractive for rally work. Honestly, I did not really follow the daily results. But I know that in the classification of the small group, the tiny guys, the bikes, the quads, the side-by-sides, in the first half of the rally, there were some serious fights. In the enduro class, the largest team was from Lithuania, five out of 14 bikers. For their leader, Aronos Gilesnikas, the Balkan off-road rally was a training event before the Dakar. It looks good for him. The training was a success, and Aronos won the first place in this rally. We had almost the same picture in the side-by-side -side class with 13 out of 19 teams from France and at the end the entire podium filled by French competitors. In general, the side-by-side -side class is getting more and more popular and you can see them racing in almost all the rallies. Which is understandable because many people want to have fun but not all can afford to build a race car. The side-by-side -side option is a good alternative. If you prepare it from ground zero it's still much cheaper than a sports car, and that's probably why it is so popular. The ATV and truck class lacked entries, but still the fight was interesting, simply because the best ones came to the rally. The cross-country car class had the most competitors. They were separated in two subclasses, open and limited, and in total 29 teams started the rally, with competitors from Bulgaria, Poland, Germany, France, Switzerland, and of course the Netherlands. The rally gradually moved to the east for its second bivouac. For the next three days, we will be located in a valley with a very romantic name. The Valley of the Roses. In this area, for centuries, the people grew the Damascus Rose for the processing of natural rose oil. But the bivouac was not just in the plain fields. It was on the territory of a wine complex called Starosel which, if you translate it, means drink for health. And as a bonus for everyone, there was also a healing natural mineral hot water pool. You might agree, this is our holiday. According to Konstantin Shitsov, you might not know about him, but he's a very well-known co-pilot, it's all good, but only if we're not in a rally. And in this case, I agree with him. Early in the morning, as part of three cars, we went high into the mountains to film the extreme category. And every day, I came to Kirill and asked the same question. For cross country, it's all clear, we know it by nature. Left, right, straight, bump, jump and so on. But is there something special for the extreme today? Kirill simply and directly said, there will be. And it will be. It is time. And we arrived at the designated place. There was enough time before the first team would arrive, so I went exploring and I was astounded. It would be a great day. As the organizers say, perfect. On this route, everyone could show their skills, both drivers, co-drivers and the artists. I want to say that 
The nature of this area, where the special stage takes place, is almost identical to the tracks of Croatia Trophy, the same kind of forests. And in these little rivers, there are trout. Or not, I thought, that it was just garbage floating. Among all these big prototypes, there was one small Dutch Land Cruiser 70 series, the only vehicle in Extreme Limited class. Ron and Anneke did everything consistently, skillfully, without any fuss. And doing so, they won everyone's sympathy. If you look at the daily results, they recorded times on the special stages that were often better than of the teams in Open class even though their small land cruiser did not have the technical capabilities. Their improvisation was so successful that they were able to reach the finish line. Often they had to stop, get out of the car, think about a way to pass and drive meter by meter. was going very well until they ran into a little problem. How little it's hard for me to say but the drive shaft was tied into a knot and on rear wheel drive in this section you will not get very far. Frankly speaking the pilot got a little over excited. But as they say the reward found its heroes. Even though there were no other drivers in the limited class, Ronnie van Baal and Anneke Krijns very much deserved their victory. It's not what you think, because for the third year in a row, together with the Balkan Offroad Rally, another event is taking place. It's not that much in the off-road spirit, but it's actually a rally by its own. This is the Balkan Classic Rally, endurance for historic cars. Today you will not meet them in the WRC or the World of European Championships, 
but it is impossible not to give this unique event its place in the motorsport world. Datsun, Toyota, Ford, Mercedes, Porsche, Polonaise. You should not expect from these machines to do crazy speeds, long jumps and power slides, but they are fast enough and they are beautiful by their essence. These are the old classics, who do not age, but get better every year. Good, okay, okay, perfect. It started on the track in plain with a short 7 km shakedown, the results of which determined the start order for the very first long day. And on day one, the teams had to go through the longest special stages and the endless liaisons. A route of more than 500 km made them change the bivouac from the Rose Valley to the Black Sea to the beach resort in the town of Juni. The Balkan Classic Rally is a blind rally, not like the normal ones for cars. Here there are no pace notes. It's a road trip, just like in rally rates. And for those who do not know the difference, I will explain. In a normal rally, the crew drives the route some days before the start. Everyone passes several times on the special stages and they make their own pace notes, meter by meter. Making note of the corners, of jumps, etc. Pace notes look like this. Each crew has its own way of making these records and usually there's some differences among the co-pilots in their way of describing the route. For enduros and quads this is a roll road book and here is how the rider unwinds a part that he had already finished. Four wheel drive vehicles it's just an ordinary book. The teams in the Balkan Classic Rally navigate and race to the finish line. And here they come to the place do like this and throw out the road book. In an ordinary day, it's just a trash bag, but now it's road book storage. As you can see, they had everything. High speed straights, a lot of corners, different terrain, technical problems, flat tires. And each day they drove between three and five special stages with service areas in between. I know for sure these type of rallies are done in Russia, but not with this length. But still, there are the cars, the teams, and it may be good to pay a bit of attention to this rally and get your hands dirty in one of the three classes. best press vehicle in any rally was and will be a helicopter. It makes all the tasks very easy. Yet to film from a helicopter is not very easy. Even small wind shakes the chopper and this will be noticed. However, in terms of logistics, to move from one place to another with hundreds of kilometers in between, it is the only way. Our pilot was very fast and experienced, always trying to lay on the turns 
and these were actually the most beautiful moments of the flight. Apart from those, of course, with the fantastic panoramas, which you cannot see from the ground. On the fifth day of the rally, the caravan reached the coast of the Black Sea. The weather was warm, but still we were in the early autumn and the wind at the beach was cold. Well, of course, this is all normal. He's not playing chess. I want to say that the bike and quad guys are brave people. Sometimes they drive over 100 km per hour, protected by, well, almost nothing. Helmets, boots, protection gear. Well, I'm just too scared for this sport. In this sense, side by sides, cars and trucks are more fortunate, because at least they have a roof over their heads. When you ask competitors, well, how was the rally, how was today? You can hear two answers. One is, I like it. And second is, I don't. And that's actually something normal. But if you ask them, what is the most beautiful thing that you saw? How do you find the nature? The vast majority will probably not even understand the question. Because the pilots are concentrated on the track and their driving, and the co-pilots, of course they look out of the window, but only to compare their position with the roadbook. But for the extreme teams, they can enjoy it all. They can walk around, take photos, even take a swim. They have plenty of time to do all these things. The service crews and the press, I think we're the most fortunate. We can see and experience all this beauty. Like those who came and entered in the discovery category. Those people took all what was there. They did not compete against the clock, but they drove the routes with pleasure and joy, admiring Bulgaria and the rally at its finest. I was always very jealous of the Discovery teams, especially when you're standing dry and clear watching the action of the extreme or cross country. Do you see? I'm not lying and Alexander confirms that. Breslau Poland and Balkan Off-Road are two very different rallies. Already in Poland, Alexander said this. He said that in Bulgaria everything would be different. The nature, the type of routes, the atmosphere and the philosophy. And the trend in recent years for many events is to give participants a choice. To live in the bivouac or decide and take hotel accommodation. I cannot give a clear statement which is best, but the stay in the hotel is definitely good in its own way. At least it's better to work inside. But at the same time, the unity and the romance of life and bivouac are getting lost. Well look, you go out of your room in a cozy hotel and suddenly you would like to have tea or coffee, white wine or red wine. Whether you like it or not, it's up to you. It's there and it's free to use. And this accessibility is actually very relaxing and tempting. But we are on a rally and this is the most important. In these big events, time just flies. It seems like yesterday that we were racing at the foot of the hills of the Balkan mountains and today you can hear the waves at the beach. Although, between these two points, the teams raced over 2,500 kilometers in eight days. So, let's see the results. Moreover, just two days before the end of the rally, it's possible to see who are the top contenders. We will start with the Balkan Classic Rally. In the cars up to 1.6 litres, the victory goes to the Austrian team with the Ford Cortina GT. In the 2 litre class, first the Belgians with the Ford Escort. And in the 3 litre class, there was a big fight between Porsche and Datsun. Datsun and Porsche. And the winner was determined on the last special stage. The best overall time was done by the French pilot, Bertrand Pirat, 
and the Iron Lady from Luxembourg, Andrea Hansen, in their Porsche 911. In the Enduro class, on the bikes, the top three riders had such gaps in between that catching up was impossible. The riders were having some navigational problems, but it was not enough to affect the end results. Aronas Kalasnikas from Lithuania. He took the lead from the very start of the rally and got the victory right up to the finish. According to him, it was a good training for Dakar. In the quad class, the winner of the Rally Breslau Poland came to the finish arch also as first, making it a double win for Alexander Piotrzynski in the Breslau season. In side by sides, the fight for the podium was on until the last moment. In this class, the French teams overran the entire podium and the best of them were the careful Jan van Beek and Emmanuel Barnard. The biggest class of the event was cross-country open cars with 24 teams at the start line. And there was a big fight for the podium, but at the end, the Bulgarian team of Konstantin Sholakov and Ivalio Tsekov in their home-built Toyota Hilux took the overall win. Very interesting was the story of another Bulgarian participant with their buggy. They call it a Suzuki Vitara and they came in third. Well, yes, this is how a racing Vitara looks after some modifications. A few hundred meters before the finish line, their car took a major mechanic problem in the transmission and stopped in the sand. This threatened not just the podium, but also the finish of the entire event for the team. It is a similar situation to what happened to Carlos Sainz when he blew the engine almost at the finish line. But then it was about the title for world champion in the WRC. Here the situation was similarly dramatic, but the Bulgarian Mitsubishi crew came to the rescue, dragging the Vitara prototype all the way across the beach to the arch to the finish, giving them a third place overall in the classification. In cross-country limited cars, the French Toyota team of Jean-Francois Rio and Marie-Aline Rio were the fastest after eight days of marathon. In the heavyweights, the trucks, for me, a completely new rally world opened as part of the Balkan off-road rally. In the trucks, under 7.5 ton, French-English team on Unimog successfully took the overall win. And the big trucks, those over 7.5 ton, the Germans with the Tatra, took the lead from the very beginning and they managed to stay ahead of their rivals in the Kamas, again raced by a German team. Well, not actually raced, but more or less driven to the finish line, only on three wheels. Let us summarize the extreme category. In the open car class, we would not be looking for a sensation, but still, after numerous tries to lose himself on the route, Jim Marston did manage to find the way to the finish. And in an interview after the finish, he admitted that it was one of the hardest races he ever did. On the last special stage, he was leading with a big gap, but after a mistake from his co-driver, they got lost, losing valuable time. And this mistake was what the two French competing teams were looking for, and they took their chance. Jim, of course, had planned to finish below the arch on the Black Sea as the first, showing all the best that he could do, but it turned out that he arrived as third. Nevertheless, it did not affect the overall result. And at the podium, there was a surprise waiting for him. Organizer in Russia, this is the La, La Doga Trophy. So, the winner of this year's event the finish and the award ceremony at the beach of the Black Sea, of course, is trademark of the Balkan Off-Road Rally. It's warm weather, it's pleasant, there's a friendly atmosphere. It's a fight for the last meters of the rally, and maybe not so much with the other competitors, and maybe more with yourself, to prove that you can endure this, that you can reach the finish line. In the morning, as usually happens with every big event, you wake up and understand that something is missing. There is never enough 
drive, adrenaline, fight with the clock, communication between the same kinds of rally people. And I just want to say to everyone, thank you so much. It was not just interesting, but also a very beautiful rally and a week full of emotions. Thank you to all participants for all this what you see now on the screen. This is your job and masterpiece. Thank you to all members of RBI Media, crews, organizers, press, spectators. We speak different languages, but we always manage to find a common understanding because everyone is devoted to this one special thing called off-road racing. And thanks, of course, to the Olga team, which gave all of us an unforgettable day at the beginning of the autumn. Get ready. Time flies fast, and next year is just around the corner.